Hi, this is Ruth Medgebra and welcome to Adorama TV. Today I have an amazing opportunity to speak to one of Ireland's most well-known photographers, Barry McCall. Barry has invited us into his studio today where he has taken some amazing beauty portraits and some really incredible celebrity portraits over the years. Adorama TV presents Out of the Dark Room with Ruth Medgebra. Barry, thanks so much for inviting us into your studio today. It's an absolutely fantastic space up here. It's like a little hidden away gem in the middle of Dublin A, yeah. right beside the Guinness Brewery. So. And you're right here, right on top of Guinness. Oh, absolutely. Right next door. Couldn't we be happier. Love <laughs> it. So tell me a little bit about how you got started in photography. As a child, I used to love playing around with my mum's camera. It was a Kodak Instamata camera. Even if there wasn't any film in it, I'd actually be just taking little imaginary shots around the house. Oh. Um, and then um, and noticing that uh, when we were away on holiday we'd actually do the family snaps on the beach and all the horizons were straight and a lot of flare coming through from the back and all that kind of thing so it was instantly you had it yeah and uh, uh, fortunately one evening myself and my brother were allowed to stay up late and watch some television and there was a program called me and my camera with david bailey in it and we saw the process from start to finish of david bailey being out in the street taking pictures of like old corrugated fence mm. to processing a darkroom and then printing and we were just thinking oh god it's like a work of art wow. i really really love that and it's a way of um, you know it's a way of me expressing myself like uh, other other artistic endeavors in school weren't working out right. so i said photography i like it and i can actually do it so you did it um, well, yeah. yeah well my, my brother it was it was very keen as well and he started doing night courses so um uh, he was bringing the information back after his course and giving it to me i was like a sponge so i'd be absorbing everything and um from then our father built us a dark room in our attic so wow. we were actually um, photographing processing and printing our own stuff at home so tell us about the portrait book because it's a it's a 20 years retrospective mm -hmm. and it is mind-blowing how strong every single image is page after page you you keep just flicking through going it's amazing it's an amazing shot it's an amazing shot how do you get to the point where you say you've done a shoot you know mm -hmm. you've been three four five hours in a studio with someone do you come out of that shoot saying that's one for the book i have that sh particular shot i know that's bingo i've got it or yes tell us about your uh, your selection process oh it's it depends on wh which way i'm shooting uh, a lot of the time on some well, some of the commercial work that we do in the studio i'll be tethered which is like wired out of your camera into your into your computer but a lot of the time I like to keep control in the camera so I work off the CF cards okay. it's a kind of a it's it's an I think it's kind of an old-school way of working mm. whereby I much prefer the crew and the team who are working with me to be looking at the subject or looking at the model or looking at the actor so they're literally everybody is around the camera and they're concentrating on what they need to be concentrated not on, on the screen not half a mile away or on the other side of the studio wow. looking at a computer screen okay. so I much prefer everybody to be live and on the moment and go and hang on Barry there's something going on there and they'll nip in they'll do a retouch as Post it on the screen go mm, don't quite like that yeah. I much prefer it to be like at the moment Hands capturing on. something and like all yeah. the attention being paid um, and whilst I'm working on a card if I see anything or if I'm around a particular area that I like the shape of the face I'll look back for a reference number on the back of the camera and I'll just shout it out to my assistant I, I sound like a dentist or a doctor you'll hear me go 4329 no, 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 no. you'll hear me shout the numbers so when I go back in to edit on bridge um, you'll know he'll know uh, that we isolate shots from four, five, six, nine to seven, eight, two, three for that particular shot. You'll have an idea that those were good. Let's yeah. work off and those. And then we actually go into the revisit. proper editing and bridge, and then I'll start highlighting or marking or. You know, All while your your model or your subject is still here. Yeah. So you can go back then and re-edit. Yeah. That's a brilliant workflow. I like mm -hmm. that. It's very much reminiscent of shooting on film, although you had you know yeah. a week or so to go back and yeah. look over your shots. I just love I just love it. I think it's a, a, again because maybe I'm one of the last generation to come up through the uh, using film and stuff it, I found it a very very good workflow mm. and we've tried to bring it up to date in the digital system by I still would supply my clients with contact sheets as mm. well as screen resolution images from that contact sheet so that my 10 favorites on a contact sheet I'd have screen res in screen, screen res images of then 10 10 shots for the clients to look through as well so they can look at the contact going like that one and then Kick it and, and that becomes screen is. res just for them and then they just give me the orders of the images they want and then we bring them up that's fantastic mm -hmm. it's brilliant it's, it's old school i think i don't know i don't know whether school. i don't know whether anybody does it like that now but it works for us um, yeah. and all the clients seem to be pretty happy with that tell me about your crew because you mentioned there that you'd be surrounded by a couple of people how vital are they or is there any time where you're just out by yourself it all depends on the gig. Um, from day-to-day -day work uh, based in here, here in Nine Bond Street or out on a location shooting fashion, 
I'd have my, my main assistant with me, Dylan, and I, I could have a second assistant with me. And then there would be your hair, your makeup, your styling, and all the various other runners and assistants on a job. So does it, like on, on it 30 grow. big jobs, yeah, sometimes they can be a crew of 20. 20. And that's not too big because I know some of the other international shoots, like the big fellas coming in, the big guns like your Armani's or your Chanel's, yeah. you could have crew 20 or 40 or whatever, it goes up and up and up from there. Wow. Mm. Okay, so you're very much not only just a photographer, but a director. As you're well. a captain you're, of a ship. Yeah, exactly. Basically, like you've, you've, you've got to let all these people um, let their talent shine. But at the same time, you have to be the one with the direction at the end of the day. So you can sort of say, listen, with makeup, I realize you're doing this, but I definitely need it to look like this because my lighting is like so. Yeah. So you try and coax and guide the people your way of thinking, but yeah. still letting their talent flourish within the shot. There's very much a style to your imagery that mm. when you, you could be passing by um, some work on a wall somewhere in a gallery and... If your shot is hanging on the wall, people are going to go, that's a Barry McCall shot. Because it's very distinct the way you shoot. I think they jump out at you. Right. Is it the eyes? It could be the eyes. I'm a, I'm a devil for eyes. I'm sure every photographer is. But I'm, I've got a penchant for, for blue eyes in photographs. Wow. Because they have a tendency of, you know, they let in so much light. Where if I'm photographing somebody with darker toned eyes, I need to put a lot of light in there to make them shine. To or to big highlights in them and whatever. So uh, blue eyed, green eyed or hazel eyed uh, subjects I love. I'm looking at your work and I feel like I know that person and that's probably the best thing you can ever do as a photographer is, mm -hmm. is give that person as they are. You have this outstanding image of Liam Neeson looking out over New York. It's a black and white image, we'll probably show it now, but I mean, how do you, it's almost like you're not there. You know, it's like you've set up a, tri a tripod with a camera on a, tr a timer and you've gone because mm -hmm. he's, not, he's not phased by you, he's not acknowledging you. How do you get to be on that level with someone? Um. Again, I, I think it's the case uh, by nature, like although some people may not say it, I'm, re I'm pretty shy, it, like other than when my work is involved, I can get a bit. So if, if I give them that person all that space when I arrive in and just let them like contemplate, relax, whatever. And I, to be honest with you, during that shoot, it was quite an emotional time for, uh, for Liam. It, like it, it wasn't too long since his, his wife passed away. Mm -hmm. And it was in his house and it was like kind of quiet. So we'd be, we'd be very respectful of him. And he was sort of saying, so where would you think a, a, a good picture would be? I said, well, look at the view out your, out your windows. That's like amazing. It's yeah. like Central Park West. And um, I said, would you mind just sitting there and we just chat away? So we just sat, we posed him up a little. He's pretty image aware anyway, so he'll know what's looking good. But I felt he's a very, very architectural person. When you see him, he's like the size of a house, <laughs> strong forehead, brilliant nose and everything. So I said, would you mind, Liam, it'll most likely be a profile shot of him. He's going, just shoot away. But we had to keep on chatting to him until the light came good. I wasn't using artificial light, so I had no LEDs or keynotes yeah. or anything with me. So what we were doing was we were actually waiting for the light that was outside hitting the buildings just to come around a little bit and hit him. Okay. So then I was getting the balance of light between the inside of the room and the outside of the buildings. Mm. And as soon as that happened, bit of bit of we had the shot done in I'd say about a minute and a half. Wow. So I mean that's very much you going into Liam's house and you're you're spotting something and setting it up in a very yeah. kind of natural and easy way. How do you get Colin Farrell to jump on top of a roof in LA? Easily. No, it's like he's uh, I, I, my relationship with Colin is pretty cool. He's a great guy. He's a great supporter of the uh, the charity that I do a lot of work for. So when we went up to do the photographs of him, that was on the rooftop of the Roosevelt Hotel on Hollywood Boulevard. It sounds really, really glamorous. And <laughs> um, we did all these uh, black and white images of him, and he was looking amazing in them all. I hadn't seen him looking that great. And at the end of it all, he just sort of said, um, he just looked at me and he says, Bazar, can, uh, can I jump up on the sign up there? And I already said to him, like I was looking at his PA and his PA was going. <laughs> but, and you uh, were saying, yeah, yeah go, 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 go. So he, he, just, he just literally sort of said, I think it would make a good shot. So he just jumped up there and we shot about two or three different angles on it. And then one just went, okay, that's looking good then. As you're able to get downtown LA, if you look at yeah. it really fine in the background, you'll see downtown LA. Can you tell me as well, one thing that I always love to know is, what is your favorite piece of equipment to have in your bag at all times? If I was to put you on a desert island tomorrow, what are you not going to leave without? Camera or Camera, gear? lens, light, anything that you can think of. Um, what makes a Barry McCall shot with it? It has to be there. <laughs> Things have changed since digital came along, but like, let's talk about now uh, Canon 5D Mark III. That's it. That's your baby. Full stop. Really? Yeah, it's, it's such a versatile... Yeah, and then lenses wise, I used to carry a lot of lenses. I used to have my 80 to 200 or whatever. And then I found when I was arriving out onto these uh, shoots that um, it, it, 
sometimes I was arriving by the seat of my pants. I didn't know what was going on. So I started to introduce a 24 to 105. Mm. Again, it's not a particularly fast lens, but I started introducing that into the kit I had. And I just noticed that, hang on, I'm using this more and more and more. And now I, when I go out, all I have is two kits, Canon 5D Mark III. Uh, 24 to 105 and Canon 5D Mark III 24 to 105. I bring out two identical kits with me. That's it. <laughs> so you've got it covered. I've the got same it covered. Kit. Yeah, same kit. If anything happens, God forbid, I have exactly the same kit there. But depending if a client wants more compressed backgrounds or they're after some wider angles, I'll yeah. book in the lenses accordingly. But I okay. used to carry everything, but like I'd be only working with them once every so often. So would you be the kind of photographer that's never without his camera? Would there be you know a oh, camera on you all times? That sounds uh, maybe. Uh, I don't carry a camera. No. No. So like uh, we most of the most of the week I'd have a camera in my hand anyway. So it's nice to put it down. It's or nice do to put it down. But we do shoot on the uh, the Instagrams under this. We yeah. do take pictures on that. There's no doubt about that. I yeah. mean, do you, is there any still personal projects you do, or is it you know you're doing so much of it in your professional life that it's nice to have a break? Um, there's a there's a little bit of that coming in. I'm one of these lucky characters that my hobby is my job. So wherever I have anything that's personal to me, I can include it in the in the workflow in here. Um, and again, like like the portraits book, that was like um, something that I wanted to do after hours, but it ended up becoming Could a commercial. Included it, yeah. yeah, it included in the commercial and it let me spread my wings a little bit. So it was great. That's fantastic. So it's all around. It's just your passion in general. Yeah, just my passion. That's yeah. fantastic. Thank you so much for chatting to us today. No it's problem. been an absolute welcome. pleasure. That's it for this episode, but join us again on Adorama TV when I'll be meeting some more great photographers, finding out their tips and tricks and sharing them with you. Bye for now. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.